Shabbat Shalom. This is Shabbat Bo. Today we are looking at the penultimate plague, which is darkness. Darkness is a part of the order of things in our world. A world without physical darkness is impossible to imagine, and yet those at the extreme north and south of our world endure periods with, without darkness and without light. Neither, in my opinion, is enviable. The absence of light may designate a time of rest or simply one of lethargy. It may also be a time when we have an awareness of, of comfort and tranquility as when we go to bed. Fear of the dark is not limited to children. Whatever makes us feel safe, secure, and protected somehow seems to disappear when the light is extinguished. Darkness can create fear, uncertainty, loss of control, so much so that many children sleep with a nightlight on and some adults would like to. At this time of year here in the UK, it is difficult not to notice the darkness. Many people travel to work in the dark and they return home in the dark. In addition, many of our days are gray and dark and dreary, and this gets worse as you go north. At times, the darkness may feel heavy, even overwhelming or suffocating, and many people suffer from sad seasonal affective disorder. Others take any opportunity to leave the darkness and go anywhere that might be brighter. We long for sunlight and the warmth and brightness that it brings, which is why, of course, most UK residents <clears throat> take their winter holidays, even their summer ones, somewhere warm and bright. But Torah tells us that our world emerged from darkness. We read in Bereshit 1 2, the earth was unformed and void. In Hebrew, tohu avohu, chaos, chaotic, filled with chaos, with darkness over the surface of the deep. And God separated the light from the darkness. He didn't remove the darkness. Instead, he, he drew it back as if opening a curtain so that there was a place for light and a contrast between day and night, just as we have a contrast between Shabbat and the other days of the week. Parshat Bo introduces us to the penultimate plague, darkness. <clears throat> the plague of Hachoshek is not merely darkness. It's not darkness as we know it. This terrifying darkness made it impossible to even see one's hand in front of one's face demonstrating the capacity of darkness to impact both physical and spiritual well-being. The Lord said to Moshe, Hold out your arm toward the sky, that there may be darkness upon the land of Egypt, a darkness that can be touched. <clears throat> Moshe did as God commanded, and thick darkness descended upon the land of Egypt 
for three days. The Egyptians could not see one another. And for three days, they couldn't move from wherever they had been when darkness struck. And yet, only a short distance away in Goshen, the Bnei Israel enjoyed light in their dwellings. And isn't it interesting that this statement is recited every week during Havdalah? The darkness described here is not merely an absence of light. This deep, heavy darkness had substance that remained with the people and which actually extinguished light. <clears throat> it has been suggested that the darkness was composed of a thick fog-like substance, something which could extinguish the lamps and fires, which clearly it did. Literally, no light meant no way to tell day from night, up from down, no means to relate to others. Torah reminds us that our people had been afflicted with hard labor and with physical and spiritual exhaustion but the Egyptians took no note of the despair of our people or in any way acknowledging their, their pain or their suffering. The Egyptians clearly were emotionally and spiritually blind. The darkness delivered by God only completed what was already a reality in their lives. Remember for a moment those times when you were afraid of or, or even over, overwhelmed by darkness. We've all had them. What was it that restored and comforted you when you experienced that fear? Did you call out to your mother or father? Did you turn on a light? Maybe check under the bed. Did you find spiritual proof that you were not alone? Through prayer. What is it that prevents our experiences of darkness from overwhelming us with terror? King David obviously had this experience. He understood and he wrote, I shall not be afraid of sudden terrors in the night. Why was he not afraid? It was because of his awareness of the presence of Hashem. And it was this ongoing awareness that God, of God's presence that encouraged Moshe in a most difficult situation in his negotiations with Pharaoh. During these negotiations, Moshe insisted that according to God's command, we must all go out to worship him. You see, Pharaoh suggested the idea that just the men should go. Clearly leaving the women and children and all their possessions behind as a kind of insurance that they would return. Moshe insisted because according to God's command, we must all go to worship him. Not just men, women, and children, but our flocks and our herds. Everything and everyone must go. He explained that not a hoof shall remain behind, for we must select from it 
for the worship of the Lord our God. Serving God involved all that we were and all that we had. Expanding on this thought, it's important to recognize its corollary, that we don't know with what or in what way we will serve God until we are in the place he calls us to be. The purpose of our departure from Egypt was that we were to be fully at God's disposal and able to enter into the fullness of his light. Israel is called as a people to total commitment in our relationship with God. In the book of Mishli, we learn near Adonai Nishmat Adam, the lamp of God, is the soul of man. Furthermore, Israel is called by God as a nation, and this is reiterated by Rav Yeshua, to be a light in this dark and, yes, ever-darkening world. Perhaps only the righteous remnant of Israel responds, but this does not change the requirement placed by God upon our people. It has been said that our world is bathed in artificial light and submerged in spiritual darkness. As with the Egyptians, the hearts of people around us are filled with spiritual darkness, and they don't know it. Nearly 2,000 years ago, a Jew and a prophet named Rav Yochanan began preaching in Yehudia. Like the prophets before him, he cried out against the spiritual darkness of his time warning our people to repent of their sins, to change their ways, to be reconciled with God. Many, many of our people responded and agreed to live according to Torah as God commanded. And they signified this decision by the act of Tevilah as commanded in Torah. They acknowledged their transition from pollution and corruption to purity and righteousness by immersion in flowing water. Yochanan, who was the cousin of Yeshua, had the task of preparing our people for the coming of Mashiach, the bringer of God's light as we read in Yochanan, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Memra, in Greek, Logos. And the Memra, or Word, was with God. And the Memra was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made, that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was Yochanan. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness to the light, the true light that enlightens every person who comes into the world. Mashiach Yeshua is that light for whom Yochanan was to prepare the way, sent to illumine the things of God and to draw us away from the darkness of paganism and secularism 
all of those things represented in his day by Rome. We're told that Mashiach came to give light to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. If that is true, why has there been so much spiritual darkness during the last 2,000 years? And why is there still such spiritual darkness today? In Yochanan 3, this is the Besarah of Yochanan, we read, and this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. In other words, following God's commandments as given in the Torah. Like the darkness of the ninth plague, spiritual darkness is more than the absence of light. Those who are not spiritually enlightened are unable to distinguish between spiritual light and spiritual darkness. Those who do not live according to Torah hate the light of the scriptures because it exposes their evil inclinations and actions and hearts. But they might be completely unaware of their preference for spiritual darkness. People search for enlightenment in many places. Can spiritual light be found in places of education? Rav Shaul tells us the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Philosophy and theology are human endeavors and they will not direct one to Hashem. They have never been significant sources of spiritual enlightenment. Churches and synagogues offer some light in as far as they read from the scriptures, but it's often hidden under layers of human ideology and dogma, religious politics, and even financial interests, so much so that many, many people today simply avoid organized religion as empty and meaningless. Of the religions of men, Rav Yeshua declared, you have made the commandments of God of no effect by your tradition. Hypocrites, well did Yeshiyahu prophesy about you, saying, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of human beings. Huge numbers of people flock to various cults from Eastern religions and cults to bizarre organizations which are based in darkness, far from the light of the one true God. Mostly, these, these things are attempts by human beings to understand but also to control the lives of others. All hierarchical religious systems are in opposition to God, seeking as they do um, to manipulate people in the name of religion. Rav Yeshua said, 
Those who are considered rulers over the goyim lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. There are so many groups that say they have the light and even festivals and ceremonies that talk about light. If you look online, you, you find everything from Eastern meditation to uh, techniques to, to Christian science talking about the light that they offer. But the only source of spiritual light is the one true God, the God of Israel. He has brought light to us through his divine revelation of himself in his holy scriptures. From Moshe to Yochanan, God's prophets direct us to his light and encourage us to follow the instructions that he has set before us. Rav Yeshua, a representation of God, in addition to making atonement for the sins of mankind, came to direct us by his own life, his acts, his words, to the same source, the source of which he himself is a part. Speaking directly to the call of God upon the people of Israel, Yeshua declares, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. He also said, I have come as a light into the world, that whoever believes in me should not continue in darkness. He was speaking to the descendants of those who followed Moshe out of Egypt. And he declared to them that if they had believed Moshe and the prophets that came after him, they would have recognized him, Yeshua, as the promised one who was to come, Mashiach. The majority of people stumble along in spiritual darkness because they are unwilling to choose the light that comes only from God. Rav Shaul wrote to the Corinthians, if our Bessara, our good news, is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing, whose mind the God of this age, Hasatan, has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the Bessara of the glory of Mashiach, the image of God, shall shine on them. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Mashiach Yeshua. God's illumination may seem simplistic and insignificant to those who do not perceive it with spiritual eyes. There are even pious people who are deluded into assuming that they are doing the will of God while doing almost nothing that God commanded in his Torah, in his scriptures. Yaakov clearly and directly hits the nail on the head when he explains, you see then that a man is justified by mitzvot, not by faith alone. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without mitzvot, that is following the commandments, is dead also. Beginning with the act of repentance, we turn to the light, committing ourselves to walk in it. For everyone practicing evil 
hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But what does it mean to walk in the light? Many people believe that having a superficial faith in God is enough to qualify them for eternal life with God. They refuse to expose themselves to the light of God, the whole of his scriptures, and particularly the Torah, which would show them the fallacy of their ways, or at the very least, the incompleteness of their manner of life. God expects us to do more than turn from the sins we've been committing and from our evil inclination. He desires that we live in accordance with the instructions that he has given. And that is truly walking in the light. Rav Yeshua himself shown the light upon this by keeping Torah, by celebrating the feasts and festivals given by God. We are told that Rav Shaul was sent to the Goyim to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Hasatan to Hashem, that they might receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in Mashiach Yeshua. <clears throat> Pardon me. They were to turn from paganism to the one true God of Israel. Rav Shaul wrote to the synagogue at Rome, The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, nor licentiousness and lewdness, nor in strife and envy. Make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts and desires. In both cases, Yeshua and Shaul were speaking about living in the light of God's commandments, rejecting the evil inclination and doing the will of God. Repentance from the work of works of darkness and faith in the efficacy of Yeshua's sacrifice for us brings us to the light of God we can rejoice, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the tzaddikim in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the Son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins but we must walk in the light. You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. How do we know what righteousness and truth are? Only by the scriptures, by the word of God to us. And this proves what is acceptable to the Lord. We are to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Fellowship means association with people who share one's interests. We should no longer share the interests of those who are in darkness but instead expose the darkness. But everything exposed to the light is revealed clearly for what it is, since anything revealed is a light. Arise from the dark, and Mashiach will shine on you. Walking in the light means that we must separate ourselves from the works of darkness. 
For what fellowship does righteousness have with unrighteousness? And what communion does light have with darkness? Instead, pay careful attention to how you conduct your life. Live wisely, not unwisely. Use your time well, for these are evil days. Don't be foolish, but seek to understand what the will of God is. We are directed repeatedly back to God's purpose and his will, his Torah instructions for those who are wise, those who fear him. Yes, we are surrounded by a world of darkness, but we are to live as children of light, blamelessly, without fault, living among those in darkness in such a way that we reflect God's brilliance and his glory. We are to conform to the image of Mashiach. If Yeshua is the light of the world, it should be our desire to be such a source of light in the darkness of the world in which we live. We are to emulate him as he lived out his earthly life according to the commandments of Torah, observing Shabbat, the festivals, the holy days of God, and living according to his clear instructions to his people. This means that we must allow the Holy Scriptures to illuminate our lives. We're told, you are all sons and daughters of light, sons and daughters of the day. We are not of the night, not of darkness. Rav Shimon Kifa declares that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, the one people of God, Israel, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And of course, Yehuda, Jew, means praise. We are to demonstrate the illumination of our lives by showing love, respect, and concern because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. He who loves his brother lives in the light and there's no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Just as God removed us as a people from the spiritual darkness of Egypt, offering Egypt and the world the opportunity to observe the difference between light and darkness. So the redemptive act of Mashiach Yeshua and the illumination of the Holy Scriptures allows us to live out our lives in this light. His word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, that is, having a commonality of purpose and perspective, and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Mashiach Yeshua his Son cleanses us from all sin. Thus, we are drawn from the darkness into the light of God's glory, not only here and not only now, but for all eternity. May you have a blessed Shabbat and a good week ahead.